Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. Today, I'm going to talk to you about clairaudience, the ability to hear psychically. In other words, the ability to use the senses of your soul to hear things that perhaps other people can't hear on an internal level and also on an external level, because sometimes it can happen in our dimension externally and other people hear it too. The intention of the segment is to teach you how these skills can create and enhance and promote positive influence in your life or maybe changes um, for your own life in regards to if you're getting guidance from your higher self or from, you know, angelic realm or enlightened spirit on the other side. Or perhaps it might help you approach your life in a different way. So it's really always my work is to encourage spiritual growth and health. I hope it'll inspire you to see how you can apply the things that I'm going to teach you about today directly to your own life. And I'm really excited to share what I know. Claire Audience is one of my faves. It's my jam. Claire Audience is probably, I would say, my strongest psychic sense. Um, I've always had it. (laughs) whose voice is in my head? All these voices. It's always for me about discernment. Like, what am I hearing? Who said that? But clairaudience is the ability of your inner sense to hear words or sounds or noises in your mind and in your thoughts. And the words can happen as word fragments, complete senses, running dialogue, you know, this bombarding thoughts that won't go away. And it's until you turn your attention and realize it's not you talking in your mind or thinking things, someone else is thinking it for you and that's the way they're getting to you is through clairaudience. Clairaudience can manifest outward on the physical realm or it can also manifest as internal sounds in your head. So outward, we can hear voices. (laughs) I can't tell you how many times I've been like, can you hear that? Are you not, you're serious. You can't hear that. It sounds like a radio channel going off and people are chatting. Like I've like tapped into someone else's phone line and friends are like, no, I don't hear that. What are you talking about? I'm like, okay. Yeah. (laughs) Whatever. You don't like the girl that has the satellite dish on her head picking up all these random stations and then having to discern, which was actually a gift. See, I had to learn. The outer sounds can also be noises that maybe aren't apparent to other humans. Several of you out there might have had, you know, had the experience of walking into a room and hearing your name called out or waking up out of a dream because you hear your name called out loud in the physical and nobody's there. Or maybe you've heard floorboards squeaking in your house or chairs being pulled out or someone walking around. I remember one of my kids was like, mom, there's people walking around in the house. I said, I know, I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, my husband's mother's ashes are in the living room. I remember God, the most beloved Barbara Ivacek staying at my house, house sitting once she did astrology. When we all got back from vacation, she said, oh my God, there's so many people living here too. I was like, I know, I know. They're... She was like, I had to tell them to be quiet at night so I could just get some sleep. I've had clients that have heard keys jingle, you know, to get their attention and there's no physical keys jingling, but they're hearing it on the external ear, you know, can, it's, yeah, it's enough to drive you a little bonkers. And so you go, oh, this is spirit realm getting in touch with me now. Um, on an inner level, there's one that actually kind of goes between the inner and outer. It's sometimes you can hear between the lines when someone's speaking And you hear something that they didn't actually say, but you swear to God, you heard them say it because it's like, wait, you didn't say that. And you, you feel like you heard it, whether it's on the phone or even them kind of in front of you and you're not looking at their mouth, that their mouth isn't moving. And you just could swear you heard them talking. These, this is where clear audience can happen both internally and externally. Other examples of inner manifesting as an inner sound where you hear them in your own mind and your own thoughts. These can give the impressions of sounds, like how we think words without having auditory experience of them. So it's in our mind, you know, just like our running thoughts in our head, the same is true where some of the thoughts aren't really ours. (laughs) Again, my thing in my life has been to discern all the voices that I've heard forever. 
As an inner sound, Claire audience can come to us in words, phrases, quotes, movie titles, right? Songs that are on repeat, 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 and the refrain on repeat in our brain. It can come as names or conversations with spirit realm. Some examples also is if you've heard a song that just pops in your head from out of seemingly nowhere, but if you listen to the words of the song, if the song lyrics provide insight or information, more than likely that's spirit getting in touch with you to give you answers. Now, whether that's answers or advice from loved ones on the other side or angels or divine consciousness or your own higher self connection, I really want you to pay attention as to, you know, where's this coming from? Where's this answer to this question that I've been pondering and all of a sudden, the, you know, the answer comes as a song lyric. You can also have this happen, Claire audience, happen when you get an inner answer when you talk to yourself. A lot of times, you know, I might have you do this for the week too, is sit down and have a, a dialogue in diary form back and forth, pose a question to your soul, sit with the the uh the desire to get in touch with your soul and have a conversation with your soul to yourself. You know, am I really in the right relationship or am I really happy at this job or what's the best way to help my child sort through their troubles? And then you wait for the answer from your soul to yourself. You can also intend it with going to the highest source and saying a really, you know, praying. Pray means to raise your heart and mind to God. So I'm really seeking the highest source answer here to help me resolve anything particularly that you're looking at. And so when you get the inner answer, you know, you're talking to yourself, you think, or you're talking to them through your conscious mind, right? And it's happening through that psychic space of soul awareness. I'll get into it more later. You can also, uh, another form of clairaudience is when you project your thoughts um, so that other people can psychically hear them. We'll do some more of that too. The ways clairaudience comes is, like I mentioned, it could be coming from your own higher consciousness. It could be coming from higher source, like angels, God, enlightened beings, guides, loved ones. And then again, the telepathic communication to others, whether they're living or discarnate. Discarnate means out of body. So to me, when I talk to loved ones, you know, you could also do this to any family member that's alive, whether they're living in the same house with you or in another state or whatever, you know, maybe you're having issue. You can also close your mind and go into meditation and have conversation with them and get insight clairaudiently through the thoughts in your mind, through the words that come back to you, that come up from you, bubble up. So let me go in a little deeper. Maybe I'll give you some story examples for more illustration. You're going to love Claire audience. I love it. Once you start discerning like, oh, <laughs> that was not me. That thought wasn't coming from me. That thought was coming to me. Those are the things I want you to notice. Sometimes when I'm with friends or family and we're just kind of, you know, whether we're, you know, doing the dance around the kitchen, making food or whatever, or we're walking and all that stuff. I have so many conversations going on in my head, right? That sometimes I forget that they can't read my mind. I'm like, I thought for sure I said that out loud, you know, and instead I'm like doing telepathic communication, you know, from one mind to another. And I have to think to myself, Constance, you have to use your outside voice, not just your inside voice. <laughs> so let me talk to you a little bit about telepathic communication since I'm the one that brought it up. You can do this really with loved ones that have crossed, and you can also do this with people that are alive. Like I said, I've also worked with non-vocal humans, you know, I think I told you that story earlier about working with that lovely young lady that wanted me to give messages to the caregiver. And, you know, when I set out to have a conversation with her, I was just you know, back then I just, I decided to lay down. I don't know why it was the cot that the caregiver slept in when she did night shift. And I just thought, Oh, that looks so cozy. I'm going to lay down. And the woman that I was connecting with the young lady was in a bed immobile. 
and I laid down just to kind of relax and I closed my eyes to focus inward. Right. And my intention was to connect with her mind. Um, and, and it's like, I told you, remember, we've had this lesson before. It's all about intention and my intention is pure. So my intention was to connect with her mind. And so I think I told you before I was like, hi, it's Constance. Um, can you hear me? And then she was like, uh, uh, of course I can hear you. Uh, duh. <laughs> she was like 16. And I just thought how hilarious. Now it was in her voice that it came back to me. The first thought that comes back to you. And it was her voice, not mine. Now there are times when I do spirit communication and it comes back in my own voice as my own thoughts in my own head. I wrote a book, uh, Some Dogs Talk. Get it if you haven't gotten it. You can get it on Amazon and all that stuff. And you can link it on my website. You can see the link on my website under books. And in it, the protagonist finally confesses that the voices happen in his own thoughts. And he's got to discern, right? So that's the important part. So this lovely young lady, then I said, listen, I, I you know, she went on to tell me because I said, do you want me to tell your caregiver anything? And then she went on to say very intimate and personal things, which was beneficial and accurate. And so I was grateful and she was grateful. And I always give them the last word. So I said, is there anything else that you want to tell? Is there anything else you want to tell? And I have to deliver it word for word. Spirit knows I don't edit. it. I think that's why they know they can trust me and show up to me. I try my darndest to get exactly what they're saying. And so I delivered her information. She was grateful. I asked if there was anything else. And she said, um, I can't recall. I think she was like, no, tell her thank you though. And, and thanked me. And then I tell my parents I love them. And I told the caregiver to say that. So, and then I said, listen, I'm available if they want to talk to her through me. They never contacted me. Sometimes people kind of freak out, right? So um, anyway, that was that. And so I then sent her love and light and gratitude because her soul was so sparkly bright, right? Just so sparkly bright. It was cool. But she was also, <laughs> she had attitude. I loved the attitude. Like, uh, duh, I can, you know, see you. Um, I might be quadriplegic immobile, but I am totally present, duh, more than you are, totally more than you are. I mean, she was hilarious, right? So um, let them be who they are. So other times that I've done telepathic communication, and I invite you to also, is can happen with loved ones on this other side, but also it can happen with um, people. Let's say you're having a hard time with, uh, you know, a family member or coworker or whatever. Close your eyes at home turn off the phone, turn off everything, whatever, light a candle. Um, set your intention to get in touch with that specific person's higher con consciousness, higher self. And by doing that, all you do is you can imagine them, you know, you're basically, your intention is to have a conversation with them. And so you can close your eyes and imagine them standing or sitting before you and say, listen, I really would like to talk to you about some things we're going through or, you know, you're not listening or, what's going on with you. You don't seem to be able to tell me in person. Can I, can you tell me here in this space of higher consciousness realm, what do you need from me? You know, and just then stop talking and open up, actually ask one question at a time. Cause then you can get, ask a question, get the answer back, ask a question, get the answer back and keep a journal. If you want to jot it down, you can, it can help you get to higher truths. And then, um, you know, go in with gentleness, you know, maybe you might need to say, I'm sorry, or give your forgiveness or, you know, make amends, or you're going to, you know, have revealed to you some things that you need to change about yourself. You know, you can definitely say, you know, give them your good conversation of how you're feeling about the situation, but you also need to be open to what they're going to say. The answers will come back. First thought, you pose the question, the answer comes back first thought in your mind. You can also ask angels, please make this connection clear. God, make this connection clear. Give me a strong connection. Thank you in advance for a strong connection. Um, you know, you could say angels help me. I, I don't understand them. I can't hear them. Please help me open my ears or open my heart. Sometimes the sound, the, the, the words come back on a vibrational level. Listen, I don't know any other way to say this other than this. It comes back vibrationally. Well, it all moves vibrationally because it's energy and light, but it comes back so subtle that if I'm not 
holding focus to the experience, I'll miss it. This is not a brain thing. All right. It's not a brain thing. So and I've worked with some students where they were trying so hard that they would like skew their forehead and get a headache. This is not what this is. This is a open the heart and it is your ears, but all that auditory experience happens inside your brain. So the words are going to, you're going to hear them back in your mind, right? It's how that happens. Even our sound is processed through the brain. We all know this. So when you're having conversation and dialogue with loved ones, whether they're alive or on the other side, you can do this sitting in that space. Always give them, you know, be okay with whatever they say. They might say, I love you. I love you. I love you. I miss you. I miss you. You might cry. You might say you left too soon. They might say, yes, I know. Listen, every time I've asked, what's it like over there? They always say, loved ones on the other side. They say, you would never believe it. You you can't even fathom. You can't even wait till you see it. Wait till you see it. And I'm like, okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. And then I always give them the last word. Do you have anything else you want me to say? You know, and then, and then I send them love in the form of light from my heart. I just imagine a big beam of light going out from my heart to theirs. Um, when I talk to loved ones on the other side, um, or they talk to me, right? Sometimes I'm like doing something and the, there's a nagging voice in my head. And then I go, oh, that's not my nagging voice. That's someone else. Who is that? And, you know, sometimes like my dad, his voice, it's his voice. It's not my voice. It's his voice, which is so refreshing. Listen, <laughs> What the other day when I was like working and I couldn't get something to work, I heard him so loud and clear and I just loved it. And I laughed and laughed. He had the best way of saying shit. He would say shit. Just like and it, made me, it made me so happy when I heard that. Right. Cause you know, our loved ones have these little nuances to let us know that it's them. And he was so hilarious in that moment. I'm like, you got that right, dad, that this is definitely a moment for for that so uh anyway play with that this week try your telepathic communication whether to a loved one or you know take the time to send words to a friend close your eyes sit opposite them and send words you know narrow it down tell them okay i'm going to send it now and then have them listen for the first thing that jumps in their head it's always the first thing after that the mind loves to embellish or we second guess or we doubt you know that's that basic foundational stuff that I taught you in the earlier lessons, but trust the first thing you get and see how it goes. So a lot of times when my loved ones on the other side talk to me, it's often in the car, <laughs> you know, cause we're just driving along and our mind is everywhere. Even if we have the music on or the radio station, you know, we're just kind of like, I am anyway, zoning in and out and I'm driving people I'm driving, but I live in a place where there's no street lights. How's that? So, um, it's pretty relaxing. They're all one lane roads, but anyway, well, two way, two way roads, but one lane, each direction. Anyway, I'm driving along ages ago. This was like, God, how old was I? I was just barely starting my business, right? I had just started it doing house calls, didn't have a place to work out of, uh, not in relationship, trying to leave waitressing world to get into spirit work world. And I'm just driving along. I don't know if I was running an errand or whatever. And I didn't know where this voice came to my mind through my thoughts that said, stop at the black dog cafe. And because I know that that was like random, right? I'm driving along and I'm not thinking of the black dog. I'm not thinking anything. I'm thinking like, well, I am probably thinking about where I'm headed, but I hear this stop at the black dog cafe. And it was definitely directive. It was loud and clear in my brain, but it was in a voice that I wasn't familiar with. So I asked and because I was driving, I did not close my eyes and put my hands on my heart. But I just asked, who is telling me this? And now my intention was to know immediately who was telling me that. And what I heard was grandma. So I did stop. This is the grandmother that taught me how to throw light. So I trusted her. <laughs> so I stopped there. And the inside, 
I walk and there's this man, this young man about my age, a little smidge older, maybe a couple of years older. And he turns and he sees me come in and he said, oh my God, I've always wanted to meet you. Are you Constance Mesmer? And I said, yes, I am actually. And then he said, I've always wanted to meet you. I can't believe I ran into you. And I have to tell you what ensued from that meeting was a five-year relationship that expanded my soul and set my business to a higher level. And the amazing thing was, is over the five years, we moved in together and in the space while he worked during the day outside the home, there was a, a spare room in the home and also a loft where we could have a computer. But the spare room in the home, I turned to my office and I was able to put up a treatment table and see clients. And because he worked all day, I was able to work all, all, you know, he worked outside the home. I was able to work in the home, see clients. I taught classes. I created manuals for my Reiki classes. It was pretty amazing. And because he worked at the newspaper, he helped me with um, publication and advertisement and all of these things. My business exploded people. And then because I had noted uh, the day that this, the grandmother had said, stop at the Black Dog Cafe. I went back one time. I was like, I wonder what that day was, you know, was, that was amazing. Like, when did we first meet? And do you know, people, this is the amazing thing. The message itself came to me on the anniversary of my grandmother's passing to the other side, the very day, you know, ages later, ages later, she died, she passed when I was in eighth grade. And this was, I was in my, um, barely 30. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Pivotal, pivotal. So of course, to me, I always think that my grandmother introduced me to Rick, <laughs> the boyfriend. Isn't that so cool? That is so cool. This is my life, right? This could be your life too. I am telling you, this stuff is magical. <laughs> totally synchronistically magical. When you get in step with your soul and the awareness is your soul, it's pretty profound. Okay, this one is a little silly, but it's a cute little story. I was shopping at TJ Maxx. I loved that. I had my coat tied around my waist. Um, I went in shopping, came out with a cart, brought all my stuff uh, to the car, and I looked around, and I had lost my coat. Somehow it had fallen off my waist. And I, as I was looking around and I was retracing my steps, I saw a little trash in the parking lot. And in my mind, a voice said, throw that away, like a scrap of paper or whatever, throw that away. Now, listen, I always pick up litter. Okay. Like I even started this thing, love envy, don't litter on Martha's Vineyard because I just hate litter. I hate it, hate it, hate it. There's no reason why we should have it. It's a huge bone of contention for me. So I always pick up litter, but I was so irritated. I was like, no, I'm not picking that up. <laughs> and I went inside TJ Maxx. I went to the lost and found. They didn't have my coat. You know, it was like the shell of a coat. I loved this coat. Wore it to Glastonbury, England, actually. It was a two-part coat. The outer part was like a rain jacket, but a light shell. So um, I go into TJ Maxx and there was nothing there. I go outside again. I see the scrap of paper and I hear, I, I don't even think I actually saw the scrap of paper. I hear the voice say, throw that away again. And I see the scrap of paper and I'm like, no, I don't want to. And then I heard it again, throw that away. And I was like, fine. Now I really thought this was my conscience bothering me. Right. So I go to throw it away and because there was a trash bin right outside TJ Maxx and I do the flip top trash bin to throw the garbage in and there in the trash bin is my coat, my black coat. And it was so hilarious because this was totally, this was a voice that was it didn't seem like it, my higher consciousness, but it seemed like it. So I was like, hmm. But I laughed and laughed. Someone obviously had found my coat on the ground and threw it in the garbage. I was so, 
so happy to to find the coat. So then I was like, all right, who said that to me? And it felt guardian angel, definitely felt guardian angel energy. Well, I'm going to get you um, into understanding guardian angel energy when we get to the guardian angels. But for now, suffice it to say that when I said who said this, I, the energy of it went way up. And I was like, okay, thank you. Thank you, angel. Thank you, my angel for helping me out there believe that yeah listen I do I really truly always pick up trash but that day I was a little pissy I, can you tell I was just like a, no way <laughs> glad I did another time an angel saved my bum was I was on the interstate and I was passing a semi truck and I said in my mind while I'm jamming to the music like when I have music on in the car I'm jamming I'm singing I'm pretty much dancing in my <laughs> see right so i'm like jamming and dancing and i'm like in my mind i said i'm gonna pass this semi because it was kind of going slow and so as i get up to its um i'm in the directly behind it but then i scoot in the left lane and as i get up to its rear tires i hear this voice say pretty much if you're going to do it go fast go fast now really fast and i gunned it because it was so full on like go go fast now if you're going to do this, make this happen. Go, 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 go. And I, I was like, oh, okay. And I gunned it. And people, as I did, I heard this big bang. And I, as I'm passing it and catching up to the front wheels, and I'm looking in my rear view mirror behind my car, big black pieces of tire are flying up in the air behind my car. And I realize this truck has just blown a tire. Now it's trying to make its way over far to the right side to pull over because the tire has, has made it so the vehicle can't go so easily. And I am booking <laughs> out of harm's way. Can you believe that? That one, I was like, oh my God, thank you, guardian angel. Thank you. Thank you. Because that was definitely an angel. So there are times when those guardian angels talk people, you got to listen. When you hear those voices that come out of nowhere, seemingly, that you haven't directed, you need to, you know, that was in an instant where I had to. There are other times, of course, if you're hearing a voice that you're like, is this for my highest good? And they're telling you to say, do weird things or things that probably aren't for your highest good. You have to discern. You have to discern. This is not a voice I want to listen to. Remember the whole thing of how does it feel in your heart? Does it give you goosebumps? Is your heart warm? What's the connection like? This was panic, frantic. Get out, go drive fast now, pass, 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 go really fast. So that was a directive that I knew I needed to follow, right? But if I ever were to um, sit and have, uh, when I sit with spirit, I go with intention to where I'm going. We're going to talk more about that when I when I talk to you about really doing um, mediumship or connecting for your own benefit and stuff like that. I'll get into more of those techniques. But I'm just saying that when you're randomly hearing thoughts, you have to discern, is this good? You know, you're only going to do what's good and what feels right in your heart and in your soul, because that's all the good guys would ever want from you anyway. I think probably one of my favorite animal communication stories was when I was all alone and I was, I was outside a gym. I was out taking a break. I was like, Ooh, I'm so hot. Let me just step outside. And out of nowhere, this big brown dog comes up. It was chocolate lab comes up wagging his tail really hard and fast. And I was like, Oh, hi, hi. And he came right up to me. Hi, hi. And this happens sometimes. I think they, you know, the vibe that my, my arc field is glowing or whatnot, and they can, you know, tell I'm uh, in a space of love. And usually my kids might say, no, you're not mine. <laughs> anyway, so this dog knew I was, all right? The dog liked me. Dog runs up to me and I was like, hi, hi. And he goes, hi, hi. I said, where'd you come from? In my mind, I'm saying this. Where'd you come from? And he said, over there. He, totally his voice, totally not my voice. He said, over there. And he kind of flicks his head back over and I'm like, okay, okay. I was like, wow, you're a happy dog. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, what's your name? In my mind, what's your name? Max, Max. My name is Max. I said, oh, cool. And as I'm scrubbing his head now, I realize he has a collar, which I didn't see before, a brown leather collar. And I was like, huh, let me look at this. And I look at the collar and on the collar is a tag with his name. And it said, Max, I freaked out. Why did I freak out? Because this was uh, 
listen, I've had animal communication a lot, but usually I have a, a, a quote unquote owner friend. I hate the word owner, but the friend owner, the, the partner friend there to kind of bounce the truth off of. But this was the first time I've, I got affirmation from the dog himself via the tag. So a couple things are happening there. One is it was clear indication that I was talking to the dog. The other thing that was interesting is I was not reading the mind of the owner. How's that? Because you can psychically go into their data bank and get information from their soul. It's part of doing a psychic read. You can find out the name of their dog, the name of their kids, you know, if you know how to kind of navigate the higher realms. So this was a time when I realized I was not reading an owner's mind to get the animal's name. Listen, when I do animal communication, I don't read the owner's mind. I am a good psychic. I don't cheat or do sneaky things and I don't fish. <laughs> But um, Max, God, that was such a sweet dog. What a really, really great dog. He features in my book, Some Dogs Talk also. Some Dogs Talk uh, teaches psychic communication among the pages of realistic fiction. It's I wrote it for kids, but it's really all age groups. And it has fabulous information that you can use to help you learn to talk to loved ones on the other side or the higher consciousness of people that are living, if you will. And not just dogs, you can use it. My friend used it on a bird. Um, he used it on a bird. He was Russ. We were all out and I don't know where we were, we way in the Pacific Northwest. And um, I think I told you this already Russ and Stephanie and I were out there gallivanting on one of our many trips and Russ held his hand out and he called in his mind to the bird because he had read the book or he at least read the back of the book where I have all the, you know, quick pointers, Caroline's notebook, I called it because the sister takes notes on the boy, uh, Tony, the protagonist uh, adventure all along and the notes, her notes are in the back of the book. So Russ used those notes as cliff notes. <laughs> instead of reading the whole book. I forgive him because I love him. So there he is with his finger out, telling the bird in his mind, come rest on my finger, come rest on my finger, come here. And the bird rests on his finger and he is freaking out. He's like, oh my God, oh my God. And you know, then of course the bird flies off and he was freaking out and Stephanie and I are like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're not impressed. Stephanie and I do this all the time. Listen, we don't, we don't, we don't have birds land on our finger. I don't think Stephanie has either. I don't know. She's in Australia. Maybe a kangaroo hops up close to her. I've had that happen before. Okay, never. That's another story for another time. I can't tell you everything today, but Russ and the bird, that was so priceless. We are very proud of him. Very proud of him. Because he's, um, yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's all. So... <laughs> Since I'm on the, the animal connection thing, I want to tell you, there's been times when with my dog, I was in, I was downstairs and the dog was sleeping upstairs. And I said in my mind, let's go, let's go for a walk. Now I would say this before I left my bedroom or left my office or left my email sitting. And I would say it in my mind, come down because we're going to go for a walk. And I would say it, but I would be like, come on, let's go for a walk. Let's go for a walk in my mind. Right. And so wherever he was in the house, he would come down when, as soon, and it was not the same time people. And I, so it wasn't like he, I had a routine. <laughs> Trust me. I wish I had a routine where I went from the email to the walk. It, it just, in my mind, I would call him and he'd come down. It was so cute. Same with dogs. It's always fun that if you can pull this off, if you want them to bark, don't say it out loud, obviously. Say it in your mind. Bark, 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 or speak, speak, however you do. But also in your mind, you like hear them barking. So you can combine sound and word. This works really well with animals. It's great fun. I'm just saying you could try this in your mind if you want, because they, they hear a lot in sound. They also communicate a lot in pictures, which is clairvoyance, which we'll get into next week. But... <laughs> so fun. Animals, what a gift, right? They're such a gift. Okay. Truth is my friend, not everybody talks. I remember one time I was at a Bowen retraining. Remember B-O-W-E-N? I told you about that. It's fabulous remedial therapy. Love it. And I was at a training and there was this one woman and I kept seeing her dad around her. Her dad was on the other side. And I said, um, Hey, can I, tell you something. I, I do psychic work back home also. And she then, you know, 
it piqued her interest. She was like, yes. And I said, uh, can I, there's a, someone around you. Do you mind if I try to connect and communicate messages? She said, sure, no problem. Um, I, I listen, I wasn't looking. <laughs> He just kept kind of predominantly being in my visual space as I expanded my field of vision. And he had this giant hat, like a big, you know, 10 gallon hat. You remember, remember the man with the yellow hat and Curious George? Well, the guy's name was George. How good is that? But also too, he didn't say a word. And I kept trying to get him to talk. And I said that to her and that alone was the message. I said, I'm trying to get him to talk. I'm trying to listen. I'm, he's not even moving his mouth. I don't understand, but he's not communicating. She, she laughed and laughed. She said, that's my dad. He wasn't much of a talker at all. And I was like, okay. So that was the message. Also too, you know, some dogs don't talk. <laughs> You know, my book is Some Dogs Talk. It's because some do, but some don't. So, you know, just try different things, try different ways. But that's why you're also learning this whole gamut of soul awareness so that when, you know, when clear audience fails you, whether your skills or their skills, you have other things to lean in on. And we'll get to the other ones too. I just wanted you to know that, that sometimes, you know, you do have to say, can you please make this connection clear. You know, sometimes when I would sit down or when I teach students, look at, I keep thinking we're just pals. You know, we're just pals. You're not my students. I'm not your mentor, but you know, we're each other's mentor. But <laughs> when I sit with students, I say, okay, when you're going to make a connection with angel, your guardian, say, I want to have a connection with my guardian angel. I want to have a connection with my loved one on the other side, you know, whatever specific insert name here, loved one. Um, I want to have a deeper connection with God. Uh, then set your intention when you sit down. Light your candle. Shut off all the everything that's going to disturb you. Set aside quiet time. Get in your body. You can, you know, ground your energy. Feel your butt in the chair. Look around. Stay connected here now. And set the intention. I I want to get in touch with. Uh, I want to speak to you, God, or I want to speak to you, Dad, or I want to speak to you, whomever. And close your eyes if it'll help you make the connection clear. Put your hands on your heart when you're like, oh, did you say that? Did you say that? Put your hands on your heart. That's um, people when they see me speak live, I do that all the time. You know, I also hold my hand up. Is this, the, is this what you said? I put the information in my hands. Like they, you know, they said, you know, the car is blue. I, I got, gave him a blue car. And then I'm like, wait, did you say that? And they'll see me in, when I do live talks, they'll see me hold my hand up because I'll be like, is that what you said? In my head, I'll say, is that what you said? A blue car? And then they'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hold the information up to the light closer to them. I don't know. It's just a habit. When I die and then I'm like, oh, that's what all that was about. Why I was adamant about, I just automatically do that, right? I hold it up to the higher frequencies. So you too, when you're sitting and you're connecting, say in advance, uh, help me make a clear connection. Help this be a powerful connection. Help me not deny it. Um, I surround myself with light and love so that only who I want to speak to comes through. And then, you know, lean into the connection. Anytime you say, are you there? They're going to say, of course, you know, they might even say, where else would I be? You called on me. I mean, let them have their, uh, they, you know, they might be funny. They might be funny. And also too, they might be more evolved now that they've been on the other side longer or whatever. Um, let them be, let the experience be what it is and take notes if you want. I always invite you to take notes. I did, well, remember I've talked about Samuel, my God, that helped me teach classes. I always had to take notes because I was not going to remember everything he said in regards to how I should set up classes and what I need to teach and components of it. So sit and keep a journal of conversations with whomever, with God, or with your angel, with your loved one, with your dog. <laughs> that would be a great book. Write the book. Um, cat. Cats are tricky. <laughs> just, I love cats. But yeah, they're tricky. They communicate more vibrationally on a higher frequency. Clear cognizance. We'll get into that too. But you can sit with your loved one and, you know, ask God to make the connection strong and clear. Ask your angels to make it strong and clear. Have the dialogue, the conversation. Say what? Speak up. I didn't hear you. Ask one question at a time. Um, that's easier. Otherwise, it's too complicated. Ask one question at a time. Wait for the answer to come back. If it's a faint or weak answer, say, did you say that? Did you say that? Maybe if you get no answer, 
no answer is different than a no answer. You know, if you get, um, you know, maybe no answer is because they don't have the answer to the question. I've had people say, kid, I want to get in touch with my dad. Okay, great. No problem. Where did he hide the money? Okay, not happening. <laughs> He's not saying, you know, it's part of the great mystery of life. He's not saying that is locked. That vault is sealed. So I'm like, okay, where'd you hide the money? Is there money? Did you hide money? There's thinking there's money. And he's like, mom's the word. And I'm like, can I ask you this question? And then he says, no. <laughs> so, so as the investigative reporter in me, you know, I'm like, what way should I ask this question so I can get an answer? And, you know, it, maybe it's not my answer to give, or maybe they're supposed to stumble on it um, in their own time, which is what a particular dad said when they were, I had clients looking for the money. <laughs> I always wonder, like, did they stumble on it? Um, anyway, so, and then of course, like I said before, uh, when the dialogue and the conversation is over, send them love from your heart as a beam of light and feel it coming back to you and thank them for the time and being a part of your life still. And, you know, and, and always when you're in dialogue with loved ones on the other side, because that's a lower vibrational space than enlightened beings or God or angels. You can also at the same time, hold the space with your angels and say, can you make this connection stronger? Or what do I need to do? You know, and sometimes you'll hear your angels say just, or the first thing that will come back in your mind will say, relax. And you think, Oh, I'm making this up. And it's like, no, no, that's your intention is to connect with spirit. You think I'm, <laughs> I'm not kidding you people. This stuff is real. So realize help is right there. Realize it often comes flying back in your own head and your own thoughts and your own voice, but you got to trust it. And, um, and you could say, did you say that? Or did I say that? Put your hands on your heart and say, did you say that? And if you get a blank then say, did I say that? <laughs> and if you get a yes, then maybe you made something up because you embellished and you wanted the conversation to go a certain way, or you wanted a certain answer. Don't go in with preconceived notions. All right. So, um, as always, when you finish your time with spirit or your loved ones on the other side and your meditation, let's call it, you know, connecting meditation, let's call it that. When it's over, make sure you send them love and light, like I said, and thank them. And then breathe your energy back in your body. Breathe your energy to the here and now, you know, because sometimes when we're connecting with loved ones on the other side, we're actually going to their space, their vibrational space, but they can also come to ours where they're closer to us, where you can feel them nearby and you can tune into how do they fear, feel clear sensation or, you know, um, or even just the emotional component, clear sentiment. And then, uh, but when you're done with the connection and you've sent them love, you Ground yourself back in your body. Breathe your energy back in your body. Bring your awareness back to the room. Open your eyes. You know, really ground yourself in the space. Feel your butt in the chair. Look around. There's the lights. There's my water. Maybe drink some water if you brought that in. There's your candle. Smell the smells in your room, whatever, to just really get back in your presence before you get up and start moving. I can't tell you how many times that I've come out of meditation and I'm still half there. You know, I walk around the house all the time. My poor family, like I walk around the house. I'm like, don't interrupt me. I'm having a conversation in my head because I'm straddling both worlds. So if you're that way too, make certain that you don't operate heavy machinery <laughs> until you're in your body. So what works this psychic muscle? Well, realizing that when we hear words in our mind and our thoughts, they might actually originate from elsewhere, even though they will sound like us and not necessarily in another's voice. You have to discern who said that. It's especially true when things come out of nowhere or you're pondering you know, thoughts come out of nowhere, or you're pondering an answer to a question that you've been contemplating, contemplating, and then all of a sudden the awareness comes to you as thoughts in your head or even running dialogue. This is about really, um, you know, listening <laughs> to that running dialogue and discerning where are those voices coming from. You know, some of them are old tapes, but um, sometimes it is conversations that are giving you information or insight into questions you've pondered or um, someone trying to get in touch with you. So it's really consciously paying attention and attributing your thoughts to where they are coming from. And if you hear something, remember, stop at the Black Dog Cafe. And I quickly asked, who said that? 
And the first thing that came back was grandmother. And then of course the anniversary of her passing, you know, that's, that's magical right there. So that's like <laughs> proof, proof, proof. Anyway, you know, when you're connecting with another and you're sitting, whether with someone before you, when you're playing the telepathic game of thought or communicating with a loved one on the other side or trying to, you know, well, I should probably bombard Stephanie this week in Australia. Call me, call me, call me, you know, and then she'll call. Anyway, when you're connecting with another, you're, you're literally, you're shifting your awareness so that they are open and you are open to the responses back and forth in your mind. So when you are dialoguing with someone in your own meditative practice to connect with spirit, and when I say spirit, I should say connect through spirit realm, because you could be connecting with the bird in the tree or your loved one on the other side or your friend down the road or your child that you're having issue with. You're opening up so that that you can hear their responses come flying back to you as the next thought. So if you pose a question, the next thought comes right back as their response, right? Because you're asking them and then you're listening for the response. So one of the ways that you can heighten your sound awareness is by practicing listening to and between spaces in your day-to-day -day realm. We all have it. Just take a few times this next week or take a few times in the day where you pay attention to the levels of hearing that you can hear, you know, whether it's the light buzz that rings in your ears and hits your ears or <laughs> like the time when I, the various times when I have that satellite dish on my head and I hear other people as if I'm tapping into their phone lines, people are talking but also too, in the physical, you know, you'll, you'll hear a mix of physical and spiritual. The physical is also, you know, do you hear the, the light buzz of the, the lights in the room or an electronic on or the distant, you know, animal in the distance or a bird chirping outside or, you know, the sound of your stomach gurgling. All of these things help to train you to the subtle sounds as they're occurring on the physical ear. And it will actually help strengthen your psychic ear as well. Um, but mostly it's when you're getting thoughts that come into your head or when you're sitting with the intention to communicate and discerning that back and forth. You know, anyway, all of these different ways will help you focus your hearing. I think too, the biggest thing I want to remind you is that when you're discerning the voices that you hear, you have to listen to the content, right? What is it they're trying to say? What is it they're trying to get you to do or tell you? You know, Samuel was trying to get me to teach classes. This was not a heartbreaking thing to ask, right? Other things are stupid. Uh, if you ever dealt with trickster energy, that they're not going to have your best interest at heart. So you have to to realize the content of the information that they're trying to give you. Plus, don't forget, your job is to to um, tune into the vibration of the information as it comes back to you, that clear sensation or clear sentiment. How does it feel? Does it make you feel in light, you know, heightened? Does it have a warm feeling? These things I've already mentioned to you. So that's part of your discernment exercise, yeah? So... Your real world exercises this week is um, have a higher conscious connection with someone, chat with someone who's not hearing you on the physical level, maybe a friend or a, 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 or a sibling or whatnot. I remember someone, uh, she said, can I hire you to get in touch with my brother and tell me where he is? Because he had been estranged from the family forever. And I said, no, I'm, I really get that it's not, that's, I went to spirit, I immediately went to spirit and spirit said, no but you can do this. So I said to her this, I said, no, that's, he doesn't want to be found necessarily, but I'm going to have him call you. So for the next three days in a row, I'm going to say, call your sister, call your sister, call your sister. And I'm going to bombard him psychically, right? I just set out that higher conscious connection, which is what we're doing when we're connecting soulfully one to the other, we're making a higher conscious connection. And I reached out to him. And I, so for the next three days, I did that. She called me up later. She goes, Oh my God, years, like several years. 
And all of a sudden, on day three, he's calling me and checking in on the family. I said, yeah, it works. <laughs> so you can do this too, right? Do this too. Send out a psychic thought for someone to call you. And then if you get a thought from seemingly nowhere that seems random in your own head this week, this is about you paying attention, people working the psychic muscle, that's Claire audience. I want you to ask who's there, who's talking to me, who said that, you know, and tune in. And when you get an answer back, you know, I knew it was my grandmother. I knew it was the truth of my grandmother because it felt coming in and in, in love. And, you know, you know, your people, right? And even though it might come back in your own thoughts, in your own head, you know the vibration of what feels good. Now, it's, if you immediately do disbelief, then you're like hanging up the phone. Don't hang up the phone. Don't go into disbelief. Check it. Check it. If you hear that and you hear like, oh, you know, Nana Clara or whatever, you get a name in your head and you're like, instead of going into disbelief, put your hands on your heart. And if you can, if you're in a space where you can close your eyes, say, did you say that? And ask your angels, is that really her? And see where that takes you. And then you roll with it. You know, the more we believe, the more they're amped up and empowered to maintain the conversation, you know, where thought goes, energy flows, same thing, you know? So that's your deal. That's your, that's your thing this week is I want you to tune in. You can also, this is one of my favorite things to do people. You can also this week take some time to sit with the angelic realm and just connect with your guardian angel, whether you hear your guardian angel or not. And you can say, say, tell me, tell me something I need to know. What is for my highest good to know? What is for my highest good to work on this week? And uh, see what comes back to you. And if you want clarity, hold it up. Say, did you say this? Did you say this? And as always, say thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Send them love and light. Tell them to keep the connection clear and strong. You know, tell them, confess, say, I want to be strong in this. I don't want to be a weakling. <laughs> Use some of my words. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the connection. Bring it on. Make me clear. Make it, uh, make it so powerfully strong that I can't deny it. Sometimes when you're connecting with a loved one or spirits or spirit guides on the other side, maybe the first question should be short and they should be yes or no questions so you can get into the kind of each other's energy field while you go through it. And then... Um, and then ask more evolved questions or deeper questions. And I want to tell you this too, is that, you know, when you ask blanketly, I'd like to be connected with the highest being that's aligned with my truth that can come forward and connect with me and give me information about my life. As soon as you feel, remember, feeling people around, as soon as you feel spirit around, you're going to check, are you of God? or are you of truth, or are you of light? And then you're going to then begin conversation. If they don't feel the connection strong, you don't feel the connection's good, then say, go to the light. I want someone else. I want a, a better guide. When my, one of my first guides was a woman. She didn't talk at all. And I was like, okay, this is not working. I can't work with her. I need a different guide. And I, you know, it, it wasn't enough that she wanted to work with me. I couldn't work with her because I, I, I needed to hear, I wanted to work on Claire audience and she, that wasn't helping. But I do want to give you a little secret. Here's the deal about the angelic realm or higher. Sometimes if you pose a question, the answer will come before you finish the question. Why? Because they're mind readers. And they know the intention behind your question before you can even put it into words and get it out there. So there's that. Isn't that fun? And so when you're connecting with the other side, God, angels, enlightened beings, and they start talking more than you're asking questions, they can go on and on and on. And it the information comes like it's a thread spilling off a spool and it just goes and goes and goes. The second you're listening and the second you go into doubt, it might stop. So just listen, just listen, feel it. I've cried, you know, it's sometimes overwhelming, the love, the disbelief, just be brave enough to hear it all. 
especially when it's moving in a good way. Even though sometimes they tell me, this is what we want you to work on. Don't be so judgmental. <laughs> We're going to talk to you about that. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I'm not perfect. But anyway, I just really wish you well with all this. Wow, that was a long one, right? Well, I didn't want to break it up. I really, really wanted you to have all of it. All of it, all of it, all of it. So I hope today's time together has helped you. This lesson is that I've I've encouraging you with all these practice things that you could do at home is this week is so that you can develop and strengthen and you know have it for your own benefit. You know, working with your soul's awareness that is clear audience hearing inside. So I just hope that you have a chance this week to put these skills into practice in your own life and that you claim power in it really, and for your own mystical connection and greater soul awareness. If today's session has helped you, please share the love and tell your friends, families, or, you know, members or associates. I ask you to share or like or follow me on any of my social media platforms that could be found on my website, constancemesmer.com. And I just appreciate your being here with me today and joining me for the lesson that is Claire Audience. You've been listening to Soul Awareness with Constance Mesmer. Thanks for tuning in and have an amazing, awesome day. Legally speaking, this podcast is presented solely for educational, spiritual, and entertainment purposes. It is not intended as a substitute for medical diagnosis, treatment, or the advice of a physician, psychotherapist, or other qualified professional. You should not use this information to diagnose or treat a health problem or condition. Always check with your doctor. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. If you've enjoyed this episode with Constance Mesmer, we'd like to encourage you to continue your spiritual journey with this next episode.